Welcome to Teen Tower 2021. I'm Elizabeth. I use she, her, and they, them pronouns. You've probably met me once or twice if you've done our in-person make a takes in the before times. And I'm a bear. Really? Just kidding. <laughs> I'm Kate. <laughs> I use she, her pronouns. And I am excited to do Teen Tober with you. We have a fun magnet craft that we're going to do. And we're also going to do pumpkin keychains. So join us. We're going to introduce the steps to you now. Hello. Today I will be showing you how to make a fun fall time collage magnet craft. Here we see a completed one. And now I will show you how to make your own. So the first step is materials. You will need some Mod Podge or other crafting glue that dries clear, a popsicle stick or paintbrush to put the Mod Podge on your magnet, your flat surface to collage on. Here we have a wooden circle, your sticky back magnet, to attach to that circle, and then some fun cut out shapes that you can use. Um, whatever you want for collage, that is the fun thing it can look like, whatever you want. So to start, we are going to take our magnet and peel off the paper on the back, and then we are going to stick it on the back of our circle. Make sure it's nice and pressed on there. Then we will take our Mod Podge and we will take our Popsicle Stick. And we you really don't need much. You're just gonna start with a little and you're gonna spread it on the whole surface of your wooden circle. And the great thing is that this dries clear and a little shiny so you won't even really see any of this white when you're done. Okay, so when you've applied that, you are going to go ahead and choose some paper to start with. Um, I have one that covers the whole circle, but you don't have to, it's your choice. So we're gonna stick that on there and gently press down. Then when it feels nice and stuck, we are going to put a little more Mod Podge on, spread it on there. Sometimes I do use a finger um, just because it's easier, but it's up to you. Sometimes it helps to pick it up. And we're just going to spread, 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 knowing it dries clear. I think it's fun to um, do some with characters, right? For the fall time, think of what you can, if you like to dress up, what you want to dress up as, or just something fun to spice up your magnet. So once my first layer is on, <laughs> I am going to add my second layer. So for me, I am doing kind of a spooky pumpkin look. So we're going to add that on the top and add our layer on the bottom. So my character looks like she is kind of coming out of this pumpkin here <laughs> for something fun. All right. And then we're just going to keep layering that Mod Podge. And you can, um, you can wait until your base layer is dry. Sometimes that makes it easier. Um, but if you just, you know, hold it down as you work, you can do multiple layers at once. So it dries nice and fast, usually within a couple minutes if it's a thin coat. I'm just going to go around. And this is um, to make it nice and shiny so it looks cool and popping on your fridge and do my bottom part there. I always find collaging to be really relaxing. Um, it's a great activity to keep your hand, hands and mind busy. So yeah, don't worry if it seems like it's covering her up because that will dry clear too. Okay, and then I just have two little eyes. Okay, for my pumpkin. And there's one. Again, you might get a little sticky, but that's okay. It comes off when you wash your hands. I'm just gonna spread some of that Mod Podge on top. All right, and our other eye. Oop, upside down, but that's okay. 
because it's clear either way. <laughs> All right, so there we have it. And we are going to let that dry. But while it's drying, here is what a, uh, a dry finished magnet looks like. So you can kind of see it dries so nice and shiny, makes it look nice and professional and ready for your fridge. There's the magnet. So we will let this dry and see what our finished product looks like in a minute. All right, welcome back to our collage magnet craft. Now our magnet, the one we made, has had time to dry. And you can see that that Mod Podge has gone from white and thick looking to clear and shiny. So that is very cool, it really makes it pop. And our magnet, or magnets, are ready to put up on the fridge or anywhere else to show off your awesome crafting skills. Thank you for watching. Okay, hello and welcome to the Felt Pumpkin Keychain Craft for Teentober 2021. Today we're going to be making this cute little thing. Um, it's pretty much made up of three parts, a uh, stuffed little pumpkin, a little decorative leaf, and a keychain. Alright, so let's get started. So for this craft you're going to need a couple of things. They're all part of the craft kit that um, you should have picked up. So for this one, you're going to need the pumpkin keychain pattern, some orange and green felt, a packet that says needle that's going to have your needle and the little bead eyes in it, a chunk of stuffing, the keychain, a sharpie, which is not included, a pair of scissors, which is also not included, and three kinds of thread, orange, black, and green. Okay, so we are going to start by cutting out parts A and B of your pumpkin keychain pattern. The pattern for the pumpkin keychain. Um, so I usually just like to do a big cut first, and then I can put all of this to the side. Okay, and then... You can just follow along at home, cutting out. And this video is going to be on YouTube later, so if I'm going too fast and you feel like you want to pause and stop, we'll definitely be able to have, you'll be able to do that later if you want to rewatch as we go along. <laughs> and the edges don't have to be perfect. Um, because we'll be trimming up our felt pieces to make sure they match really well later. Okay, and that's the first step. Okay, so the next step is to draw out the pattern onto the felt pieces. So you're gonna need two pieces um, of each pattern. So right now we're doing the front and back pieces of our pumpkin shape. And as I said before, it super doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be trimming up the edges of the felt pieces to make sure that they match really, really well before we sew it all together. Okay, so you see, now you have two pumpkin pieces. And we're just gonna go ahead and do the leaf next. And I did try and make this look as much like a pumpkin leaf as I could. I kept drawing apple leaves in the beginning, and apparently they look quite different. So I just had a bunch of orange apples the first time I started this. Okay, and now we are going to cut everything out. All right, 
Okay, so now you have two pumpkin pieces. Oops, sorry, now you can see. Two pumpkin pieces and two little leaves. Okay, so the next step is to put a little face on our pumpkin. So you're just gonna wanna pick one of your two orange pieces. I picked this one to be the face, no particular reason. And you're gonna wanna flip it so that the leftover Sharpie outline bits are face down because that will hide them mostly when you sew the pieces together later. Ooh, there's a little ragged edge there. Um, is flipped upside down because that will hide most of it later um, uh, inside the pumpkin when we sew it together. So you can see you can't really see it on the outer edge. So the next thing you wanna do is open your packet that says needle. So obviously there's something sharp in here, so be a little bit careful. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and shake it out and you're going to find um, a needle, three types of thread, which I mentioned in the beginning. You can put those two away. We're just gonna be using the very fine black thread. And most importantly, these two little button eyes. Um, apologies for the black Sharpie all over my hands from earlier. Um, you want to be careful when opening this up that your black eyes don't run away from you because they um, have a tendency to roll far away and disappear. Um, okay, so now that we have all of our stuff for the next step, you're going to want to take your little button eyes and place them where you want them to be on your pumpkin. So I think I'm gonna make mine really low down because it looks kind of cute to me. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, and then so that when you're sewing them later, you can make sure you hit that same spot. You're just gonna very put a teeny tiny little dot of Sharpie right behind each eye to mark its place. And after that, we are going to thread the needle, which, as you know, can sometimes take a bit. So, my tried and true trick is to simply wet it just a little bit with your tongue and slide it on through the needle. If this doesn't work, like it's not right now, um, another trick you can do is if the end has kind of split a little bit, is sort of fuzzy, you can trim it and that helps keep the point nice and clean um, so that it goes through, it's not as blocked when you go through it. Okay, so let's try this again. See if I can get this to work. Okay, ta-da! Look at that magic. Okay, so once you have your needle threaded, um, and you won't actually need all of this black thread, so you can probably just, uh, for one eye, I mean, so you can kind of just cut it in half and set aside the other part for now. And then you're just gonna tie a knot. My go-to tie a knot in the thread method is to wrap it around my fingers a couple times, just loosely, and then twist with my thumb and forefinger, and then pinch between them and pull tight. And it kind of always creates this chunky little knot that um, usually works really well. Not so nice for like fine detail stuff, but with working with felt, it's really good. So then, now that you've got your thread threaded, you're going to lift up your felt piece and starting from the back of what is going to be the inside of your pumpkin, push your needle through to the front, right through the black dot that you had previously marked as a spot for your eyeball. So you're just gonna pull it all the way through, pull the knot nice and close to the felt there. And then you're gonna take one of the little eyes and you can see um, if you hold it up and look at it, it's kind of a mushroom shape. It has, oh, I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. Um, it has like a little cap and a little hole in the back. So you're gonna thread your needle through the hole in the back, just like that, pull it through and cinch it right up next to the felt. And then, oops, I don't wanna lose that. Um, you're going to push the 
go back from this time front to back, right as close to that hole as you can. Oops, I got myself tangled in my knot. Oh. There we go. Gosh, it's a little tricky today. And pull that button eye right nice up like that. And you can kind of position it how you want it to stay. And then you just do it again. Up, through the back, back to the front, thread through that little buttonhole. Here, I'll hold it so you guys can see it. Little buttonhole again. Pull it, oops, shoot. <laughs> Sorry guys. Pull it all the way through and then go front to back. And you're gonna repeat this a couple of times till your button is nice and secure on there. If your button is tilting to the side, you can kind of t get it so that the um, flat part of the button is flat against the felt and that helps keep it straight. Okay, so once you've done this a couple of times and your button's looking great, you can do it one more time, flip it over and then do a little knot. And one thing I like to do just sort of do a little micro stitch in the back, pull it through without letting go of the loop, just like that, and then take my needle, twist it through, oops, a couple times like that, so you guys can see that, and then pull it tight. And if you do that a couple of times, oh, my gosh, don't drop your needle, guys. It's not safe. <laughs> um, if you do that a couple of times, it creates a nice secure knot in the back um, in a way that's pretty easy. So I'm just gonna put that down there. There we go. Do my little thread and pull it tight like that. And then trim it. Ta-da! You've got your first button eye. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and sew the other one on. If you end up with a loop like this when you're doing your knot, it's totally fine. You guys can see, I ended up with a, oh, let me take the needle off, okay. I ended up with a big old loop in the back, which is kind of ugly, but it's still pretty secure. So you can either leave it if you want, cause it's gonna be like inside your pumpkin so no one's gonna be able to see it. Or if you want, you can just do a quick trim like that. Anyway. Now you have the eyes on your pumpkin. Yay! Okay, so now you have eyes on both your pumpkin sides. Yay! Um, and you're gonna put on the rest of the little face. So um, if you are a pretty confident sewer, you can um, go ahead and do it with thread if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna do it with Sharpie today just cause I'm feeling a little uh, like doing it the quick way. Um, and that's what I did on my first one too, you can see. It's just Sharpie. If it starts wearing off later, you can always redo it or you can add thread or whatever. Um, you could also like make a little face with your leftover felt if you want. Something like put a little mouth there. Um, either way, it's your pumpkin. You get to personalize this part as much as you want. I think I'm gonna just freehand a tiny little smile on my pumpkin. Oh, it's so cute. And then maybe some pumpkin stripes. Just little fine dots to give a sense that this pumpkin has ridges like all pumpkins do. Um, 
Okay, easy as pie. Let me add a little bit more there. Okie dokie. Look, look how cute it is. Okay. Okie dokie. So now it is time to sew the front and the back part of your pumpkin together. And to do that, you're going to need your orange embroidery floss, or sorry, embroidery thread and your needle. Um, since this is really thick embroidery thread though, we're gonna go ahead and start by splitting the thread. Um, each uh, embroidery thread, especially heavier weights, comes in actually with three, or six, sorry, six thread counts. And you can either split it into two, uh, three sets of two or two sets of three. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do um, three strands just because we're working with felt, which is a little bit heavier duty. And I think that works. Um, if you have a heavier needle at home that you want to use, you're more than welcome to go ahead and use all six strands. So you can skip this step. Um, there you guys can see all, all three right there. And you're just going to gently Let's see, peel it apart like that. It can get tangled, so you kind of want to go slow and steady. Um, and make, oh, sorry, it's getting stuck on my pumpkin. No. Um, to keep from ending up with knots. You can see it's trying to knot up a little bit there at the end. And now we have two chunks, but we only need one of them right now. You can save the rest for another project. Okay, as before, we are going to thread the needle. It might take a little bit longer with this one, <laughs> just because the embroidery thread can be a little bit feisty. So we're gonna trim the end up there. I'm going to um, wet the tip with my tongue. And we're just gonna try and thread it. The closer you hold it to the end of the actually the better it works but we'll see but I can get this there's also um, threading wax you can use which you can just um, apply to the end which makes it nice and um, keeps it from splitting which is the big reason that uh, threading a needle can get tricky just like it's doing right now okay I'm gonna pause and thread the needle and I'll get back to you guys one sec Okay, finally got the needle threaded. Very exciting. So once again, we're going to do the knot. You just circle around a couple times loosely around your um, index finger, pinch with your thumb, roll back and forth um, until you slip over the front of your index finger, and then pull tight while pinching. And you end up with this nice chunky knot. So this is the part where we're going to trim the pieces if they don't quite match up which you can see mine are not a perfect match. Um, they kind of overlap a little bit. And actually, sorry, you want both the um, black Sharpie outlines to be facing towards the middle where the stuffing's gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim the edges so they match up just a little bit better. Um, and again, I'm just freehanding this if you want it to um, use some pins if you have them at home, that can also help make this a little bit of an easier process. But even at this point, I wanna emphasize that when making these, they don't have to be perfect because each person's is gonna look a little bit different. Even my two that I've already made have looked a little bit different each time. And that's the charm of making something at home. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna take a little bit more off this edge here, um, just to make sure, and then just a little dip in the center here. There we go, that looks nice. You see how those edges line up quite a bit better now? That's good. If you really don't like that black Sharpie, you can trim it all off, um, but I think I'm just gonna leave mine as it is. So, at this point, you're going to start on the top left side of your pumpkin and you're going to hide the knot is the first thing you're going to do. So you're going to lift up the front half of your pumpkin 
um, choose a point about a quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch in from um, the edge of your pumpkin and just pull your thread through and then using your needle or your finger, whatever works for you, tuck the knot in so that it's hidden and it looks nice and neat. So then we're going to do a blanket stitch. I'm gonna demonstrate it once or twice and then just kind of do it around the edge. Um, I'll link to a tutorial um, in the description of this video. So if you need a um, more slowed down version, you can absolutely click on that and watch it um, as many times as you need to. So essentially a blanket stitch is a nice finishing stitch that goes around the edge of projects, often blankets, hence the name. Um, that sort of just looks pretty, is simple to do, and um, creates a nice, neat, even finish. You can see what it looks like on my finished one. Just has this lovely little edge that goes all the way around. Um, and it's okay if yours doesn't look quite as neat. We are just learning new things today. So to do a blanket stitch, you're going to go from front to back. Remember, we started in the middle this time, but that's only because we're hiding the knot. So you're gonna loop around back, starting taking your needle, go back to front. You kinda wanna come out in the same area this first time around. When your needle is pushed through, you're gonna circle it with the thread. And um, just to be clear, that is starting like this, looping, counterclockwise? No, yeah, looping counterclockwise, oh gosh. So you're gonna start like this, loop counterclockwise, so that thread is once more in the back, like that, and then you're gonna pull up. And it's important when you're cinching this thread tight that you don't pull up towards yourself vertically like this, you pull to the side like this, because it creates that nice finish along the edge out of here, as opposed to um, a different kind of stitch, which would have it more on the inside of your project. So now for the second stitch, we're going to hop over just one more spot about, again, about a quarter inch uh, or an eighth of an inch, depending on how, how short you want your stitches from our first stitch. So this is on the back. We're going, we started here. We're going to hop over one. So just like, boop, pop it out. Back to front, we are going to take this, the long, the uh, tie, that, or the, sorry, the part of the thread that we have already started stitching with, not the part that is at the back of the needle. So this part, loop it around the needle. You can use your back fingers to pinch if you want. And then just pull away from the edge of your project and you get that lovely blanket finish. So you can see it's already, sorry, this part of the thread, it, it changes color as it goes, but this part's a little bit dark, so. Okay, we're gonna do it again. So looking from the back, this is where we're at. We're gonna hop over just a little bit there, push through front to back, like so, pause, take the thread that we've already stitched with wrap around and pull away from the body of our project like so okay one more time look how it looks so far hop over just a little bit push sorry i'm just making sure it's also not too far from the edge so like that push around Take the needle, pull through. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sew around now and you guys follow along on your projects at home. Sometimes as you're going along, you're gonna find the embroidery thread wants to curl around itself. If you find that happening, just go ahead and whirl around your project and kind of straighten it back out, see? So it helps if you just let the thread unspiral. 
I don't know a better way of doing that really, but it does keep it from getting tangled a little bit more. Going around the corners can be a little bit tricky. You can see I ended up with a little bit more of a gap here than maybe I wanted. I would just recommend whenever you go around a corner to take a couple smaller stitches. And I'll show you what I need when I come up to the next one. So instead of doing kind of even stitches like this, you're going to take a couple of smaller ones, right closer together, I mean. Um, um, and that helps it go around the corner more smoothly. So you'll see as I go around this center corner, I'm keeping them a little bit closer together so that you can see how that looks. Okay. Okay, so once you get to the top and you have about an inch of a pocket left, you want to pause here um, and we are going to go ahead and um, unthread the needle and set aside this part of the project to come back to after we have finished our little leaf. So next part, um, you're going to take your green thread like so. Once again, we're going to split it into, oops, into sections of three. So you can see, just like, so you can see, just like that, two sections of three. You're going to pull it slowly apart so it doesn't tangle too much. And voila. Once again, I'm going to pause the video and thread this needle, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our needle threaded and knotted, and now we are going to make sure the felt pieces are prepped. So we're going to make sure both the black outlines are facing inside. Ooh, I did a bad job there. That's okay, there's no bad jobs in crafting. So we're going to go ahead and trim up the edges just like we did with the pumpkin to make sure that they match a little bit more evenly because it just makes the stitching turn out a little bit better as you go along. And just a smidge. Oops, my scissors aren't that sharp. There we go. And then flip it over and do the other side. Just kind of trimming up the edges to make sure they look pretty. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to put that aside for now. Okay, so that looks pretty good now. I'm going to go ahead and prepare to sew. It's the exact same process as before. Uh, we're not going to stuff this one, so you can pretty much pick anywhere to start. I'm going to go ahead and do it right here. Again, about um, an eighth of an inch from the edge. We're going to start inside to hide the knot. So we're just going to pull that in there. And then just... Ooh, it's sticking. Tuck it inside. Like that. And then you're going to loop around back to front. I'm going to do the blanket stitch again, just popping it out at the exact same spot, wrapping it around, and oops, pulling it through, and then popping over just a little bit and continuing the process. And again, you want to pull away 
from the edge of your project to create that nice, ooh, my thread's splitting, oh no. That nice, um, even stitching that looks really nice around the edge. Oops, I goofed a little bit on my start there. That's okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just sew. So once you get all the way around, you're going to want to do a knot, and I would recommend just doing the same kind of knot we do before, have done before. Most of this um, top part of the leaf is going to be hidden because you're going to be um, adding it to the top of your pumpkin right there. So you're going to push through, loop around the front of your needle a couple of times, pull through, and cinch, and you really only need one knot, so I think you're okay at this point. And then we're going to trim trim it off. Um, and then, if you want, at this point, you could add some little decorations to whichever side of the leaf you want to be front. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this one. You can see on my original pumpkin, I did some little, um, I'm not sure what those are called, but stem lines, essentially. I think I'm going to do something similar with this one. Just keep it kind of neat, but I think I'm going to do them a little bit finer pointed to kind of match the front of my pumpkin. There. Yay! Okay. So at this point, you've re-threaded your pumpkin needle. Um, you're going to go ahead and stuff the pumpkin, which is always fun. You're going to take your big lump of stuffing and you're going to tear off a little bit of it and using your finger or like the top of a knitting needle, not the pointy part, um, you can kind of just push it in there to your desired fluffiness. So, ooh, actually I probably don't need too much more. I'll put another couple chunks in. Uh, gonna make my pumpkin a little chubby. Um, which is very cute. Okay, how does that look? Oh, it's so cute. Okay, so I think that's about as good as I want. You kind of just want to make sure all the little corners are filled and it kind of is sitting inside there however you want. You want to make sure that you don't um, accidentally stuff the edge of your pumpkin hem in there. So you kind of want to make sure it's popped up like that. And then we're gonna sew, let's see. And then um, pretty much about this point, I'll put that over there, I don't need it anymore. You're gonna wanna figure out what your leaf is gonna look like. So on my first one, I did kind of a jaunty little hat for this guy. It started out kind of vertical like this, and I didn't love that for this first one, so I just kind of, oh, um, like this, and I ended up just taping it down like that but I think for this first this second one I'm just going to leave it sticking straight up like that because it looks pretty cute so I'm going to seal off a little bit more of the opening now that we have um, stuffed it we don't need it to be quite as wide when we stick the stem in there um, it'll just make it a little more easier to pinch everything together when we get to that point so you're going to go back to front loop around, pull through, and do that until you've closed up most of the gap. And you just wanna make sure that like, while you're stitching with your left hand, you're sort of pinching that closed so the stuffing doesn't come pouring out. 
um, especially depending on how much you've packed in there. If it's not too much, it's not really that hard, but if you've really used all your stuffing, then you're gonna wanna make sure that um, it's not poking out as you go. So once you get about halfway closed, I would say, you know, just enough room to stick your little stem in there, you're gonna just pop that in there Uh, and then we're going to switch from blanket stitch to running stitch. And running stitch is just for the record. Let me show you on a piece of paper what it looks like. So if blanket stitch goes around the edge of your blanket, kind of like this, running stitch is the one that everyone thinks is a basic stitch. It just looks like that right across. So I'll help you guys do that now. Okay, so once you've got your stem pretty well wedged in there, you're gonna flip it to the back and just go straight front to back, making sure, oops, straight front to back, making sure that you get both the stem, sorry, that you get both the pumpkin and the stem, and then the front part of the pumpkin. And this can be a little bit tricky, so just take your time the first stitch is pretty important to secure it all together and then once you get that you're going to go just a little bit to the left and this time you're going front to back instead of back to front and you're going to pop out again all of it together make sure those are nice and tight stitches because you're essentially making sure everything stays together then you're going to pop over just a little bit again back to front front to back. You might have to push a little bit hard in this spot um, just because you're going through four layers of felt. And then just making sure, ooh, no. So you're gonna go back through the stem to the front. Ooh. You just kinda wanna make sure you're nice in line with your blanket stitches there and pull. So at this point you've pretty much sealed it up. I'm a little bit worried about the wobbliness of my leaf though. So I'm going to go ahead and do another round of um, stitches just a little bit below the first one. So I'm going to hop down just a little bit, push through to the back, do that again, and just sort of do a series of stitches in this general area. It doesn't have to be a perfect running stitch. In other words, it doesn't have to be exactly in a row. You just kind of want to go back and forth for a little bit and make sure that you've secured this area pretty well. Okay. Focusing on the part where there are four layers of felt, specifically. Okay, so that feels a little bit stronger. So at this point, I'm going to do one more back to front. front to back. Ouch. See, be careful guys. Um, and then I'm going to do a little knot. I'm going to gather up this spot right here. Ooh. Just do a stitch like so. Once again, we're going to loop around the needle to make that nice knot. Pull through slowly. Pinch, cinch it down if you need to with your thumbnail. And then I'm gonna do it one more time just to make sure this is a nice secure knot so that um, it all holds together as strongly as possible. Uh, there we go. There you go, okay. So then you're just gonna set down your needle and trim off the back like so. And you've made the pumpkin. Oh, look how cute he is. Oh, I love it. Okie dokie. So the last step for today is, of course, attaching the keychain 
to the back of your little pumpkin. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, you can use whatever extra thread you have left over at this point or anything you have around the house, whatever floats your boat. Um, you should have some left over of one of your colors. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use green today because I feel like that'll be a nice contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull the knot through. Okay, so you have your knot like that. Uh, it doesn't need to look super pretty because it's going to be on the back where mostly people will be looking at this part here. So once you have threaded through your knot, so it looks like that, you're going to take the largest loop at the end of your keychain and thread your needle through it. Essentially, we're going to do the same thing we did with the mushroom buttons. So you're going to cinch it right up to the edge of the felt. And you're just going to do a whip stitch this time under, up, pull through. You're going to push down into the felt poke back up through the circle and just do this a bunch of times so that that key ring is, oops, snagged my leaf. Nice and secure on the back of your pumpkin. Cause you don't want the key ring to have all the weight on one chunk of the felt or it'd be really easy for it to pull free. Oops, I just did a blanket stitch reflexively. My bad. Just up like that. Like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once you have a nice, well stitched on a key ring, you're just gonna do the same knot you always do. Pull through. loop around the end of your needle and cinch shut like that. And I'm actually going to do that again just to really secure it on there. Like so. One, two, three, and pull through. And then trim off the excess. Make sure your key ring's right there, and ta-da! You have your little pumpkin keychain. I hope you guys had fun doing this craft with me. I really loved this one. Um, happy Teen Tober to you guys, uh, and may you have a lovely autumn. Bye-bye. Goodbye!